the purpose of heavy is to create more fans for the bands. You know, that's that's a bit of our that's our motto in the in heavy HQ. You know, it's like that's our purpose. That's why we exist. We we exist to increase the database of the bands. You know, we're here to sell more tickets, or to help them sell more tickets and sell more albums. Welcome to the Music Business Facts Podcast, where successful music industry experts share their industry secrets that will help you take your music career to the next level. G'day everybody, Rodney Holder is my name, and welcome to my Music Business Facts Podcast, where funnily enough, I do strive to bring you the facts about doing business in the music industry, that's making money with, in and around the music business. As we all know, music is such a beautiful, powerful, and expressive art form, and if you want to create music for the sake of creating art, then that is just amazing. But some people actually want to try and turn their love for music, or their passion for the music industry, and they want to turn it into a business. They want to make money, and uh, often there are many objections about that premise. So I'm very curious to know, have you ever had any of an experience like that where someone has kind of arced up about you trying to make money from the music industry? Or perhaps you're even one of those people yourself who doesn't like mixing art and commerce. I'd love to hear from you, Rodney at musicbusinessfacts.com. Alrighty, so let's get into today's interview and my discussion today was with Mr. Carl Newman who is the owner and director of Heavy Magazine and Heavy Magazine is a digital Australian music resource. It's got all the components that you'd imagine and expect a traditional magazine would have. Uh, In fact, Heavy Magazine used to be a physical publication. These days it's only available in the digital realm. But I think it's more than just a, uh, a magazine. Um, it's also, uh, they have heavy TV and they have podcasts, as well as the other things you'd expect like gig guides and movie reviews and a whole ton of really good stuff like that. So I caught up with Carl on the last day of the Big Sound Music Conference here in Brisbane, Australia, where I live. And uh, listening back to the interview, I think we both sound a little bit tired, <laughs> but that's understandable. For those of you who have uh, done the music industry showcase thing, you probably know what uh, days and days of uh, free alcohol parties and very little sleep can do to you. But I do hope that you'll agree that it's an interesting conversation. Uh, Carl is an entrepreneur and he's trying to forge a path in a publishing industry which has obviously been extremely disrupted by uh, technology, uh, arguably more so than the music business. And we talk about a lot of that stuff in the interview. Um, Amongst other stuff, one of the really cool uh, things that Carl talks about is being on the other side of the PR equation. So we, uh, we talk about the art and the business of marketing and PR, which is obviously important when you're trying to get your message out to your consumers and your fans and your customers. And that's why I think you should probably pay particular attention to what Carl has to say, because again, he's the guy on the other side of the promo equation to most of us. He's the guy that's being pitched to. He's the guy whose inbox is being smashed by artists and managers and labels and promoters who are all trying to get his attention and uh, obviously utilize his network, his assets and his magazine. So have a listen and hopefully you'll learn something and I will talk to you guys on the other side of the show. Enjoy. Here I am at Big Sound today and I am with the owner and the director of Heavy Magazine, Mr. Carl Newman. How are you going today, Carl? I'm very good. Thank you. Excellent, Carl. Carl, for anyone who doesn't know anything about you, buddy, and uh, your magazine, can you tell us a bit about yourself personally, and then tell us about your magazine? Sure. Um, Australian-born, Queensland-bred, lived in Melbourne for the last 20 years and moved to Sydney recently. Um, Run Heavy Magazine, which I bought a year ago, Mm -hmm. and and work on it night and day. Um, It's my passion, and... uh, I really enjoy it. It's, um, it, it, you know, it's, it's about metal, it's about rock, and it's, that's who I am, and that's what I love. And, um, you know, I have a history of working with other different magazines as a writer or a photographer, um, and I have a background in marketing as well. I had a marketing company. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so I started in 93 in Brisbane at the Scene Magazine, which is now Scenester and worked in the office there with the the guys there and had a great time and learned a lot and um, had a wild time in the in the music industry here in the valley actually so it's good to be back and um, and remember remembering some of those times but um, yep probably took it a bit too far decided to have a rest and started the marketing company and ran that for years and made websites and 
posters and videos for companies like Oral-B and Honeywell and something for Warner as well and a whole bunch of other things, uh, you know, big companies like that. So, um, which was great because I didn't have any formal background in marketing, uh, educational-wise. Um, but so it was all self-taught and, but it, you know, it was working, so I just kept doing it. Sure. And then eventually I decided to get back into the music industry and because that's what I loved. I always had that yearning. Mm-hmm. But I didn't really trust myself because, um, well, you know, there's a lot of drugs and alcohol in the music industry, you know. But I, yeah, you know, it, you get older and you go, well, that wasn't a good approach. That wasn't, there's two ways of doing it. There's, there's the right way and there's a, a, a the tough way. And, that, and, and the tough way is always the way that's clouded, you know, and... Anyway, so I, I had a clean approach and have really enjoyed the last couple of years being back in it with that new point of view um, and just going from strength to strength, I think. It's just, yeah. Very cool, very cool. I guess, mate, for me, the burning question is uh, you're running this successful marketing company and you've got all these high-end clients why would you buy into, uh, you know, I guess, um, something that somebody else couldn't work and, and what made you think you could make it work? Um, possibly because I'm really crazy. I, 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 look, you, you know, success comes from wanting to do it. You know, there, there's two components of success. There's the knowledge, you know, you have to know what you're doing. And the, but you have to have the desire, the willingness to do it. And I think they go hand in hand at all times. Like you have to, if you want to know something, you have to be willing to know first. Like the, the moment you start to think you know something already, you you will you won't learn anymore. You know. Yeah. You, so, you know, I it it's a tough. You're right. It's tough. The music industry is in a tough position. But I'm someone that tends to disagree with the status quo Mm -hmm. and it's a challenge and it's crazy and I work crazy hours but I love it you know it's for me you know like of course it's about the music the old cliche it's about the music and something you hear commonly on your podcast is it's about the artist and that can never be cliche because that is what what it's about um you know, the artist is the most important person on earth. You know, they're more important than any politician could ever be because they're the creators of the future. You know, a politician is someone that um, controls the present and, and tries to keep it safe or is meant to, you know, work for us to keep it safe. Um, unfortunately, that's not what is actually happening, but but the artist is, is the creator. You know, you look at Star Trek with the... Uh, flip phone, you know, beam me up, Scotty. You know, and we've gone past the flip phone. We have iPhones now. You know, <laughs> it doesn't beam us up, but it, you know, that was created from someone's artistic vision. Mm. Um, so, uh, like, I'm a photographer. I've drawn all my life. Um, I write. You know, I, I play some instruments, and it, it, it's to me, it's very important. And, and metal is is um, a very unique style of music you know you've been here at Big Sound you mingle with a lot of different types of music anything from from metal to techno to um, you know even jazz and country you know and and um, world music so you know it, but the thing with metal is that it doesn't it doesn't die and something that doesn't die can can be made stronger you know and I think I don't know. That's I think that's why I decided to do it. I just I didn't think I ever would, and then one day I just went, "I'm doing it." The opportunity came up to buy it, just at the time that I was moving on from another business, and I just took it and I just went, "Okay, let's do it." And it, like it's just going really well. It's we've just finished revamping the website. We've got podcast now. We've got radio. 
We've got a massive email database. We've got 290,000 on Facebook, which is 70% US based. Um, so I, I think it's, it's definitely a, a platform there that was created by the old owners. We, he did a fantastic job. And it was tough. That's, that's why they didn't keep going, because it was fucking tough. But um, it's there, and, and the artists can use that. You know, that's something they can use. And an example is um, Pagan. I think they played, I think it was here or Brightside the other night. I can't remember where it was. Uh, we filmed them live, and we had 10,000 viewers. And 7,000 of those viewers are in the US. Streaming. Streaming, yeah. yeah, yeah right. So it's up to 11,000 or something like that now. So most of that's US based. And a good, a, a large portion of that is also UK based and the rest is Australia. So, you know, like we have a platform that can actually help progress bands overseas further, you know. The tours are there, but often the, the marketing isn't done before. Like they arrive in Europe, they arrive in the US, but no one knows who they are yet. You know, so I think Heavy has that potential of um, starting to inform them if we use it right, because we're still trying to work out how we use that database. Because Facebook is a, a beast; it's a difficult beast to understand. You know, <laughs> but we're starting to master it. You know, we get you know anywhere between forty likes to four thousand likes on a on a post. It, it varies. So that's pretty impressive. So you're obviously very passionate. You can I can hear that in your voice, and uh, and you keep mentioning about helping the bands, and that's very noble. And, and uh, but at the end of the day, this is a business for you, right? This is all you do. Uh, what's the what's the monetization model? And uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, I'm curious how, how's it going. Uh, I was born a millionaire. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Fuck. Imagine saying that. Jeez, that would be that would be something else. It's like, it's like that joke, how do you uh, make a million dollars? Is it like um, start with a billion and then open a magazine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, certainly not the case. Like I said, I grew up in Rockhampton, so yeah. Um, did I say that? <laughs> so you're relying on advertising, I'm assuming. That's the way you bring in cash into the, uh, into the business? Yeah, look, it, you know, we, we sell ad space. But these days, um, it can be editorial space as well. So part of the revamp of the website was to give me full control of the website and and the content that goes up there. So like the size of the images and the placement of the images and, and what exactly can be shown to the, the reader first um, or the viewer first. Uh, we can use like really cool video clips and um, just make it a lot more interactive because my point of view like is that Okay, we've lost the print magazine. You know, there's only a few handful of uh, magazines out there, and they're all owned by the same company, you know, except for Rolling Stone. You know, that's, that's alive and well. And, um, but all the other magazines you see are all owned by multi-billion dollar companies, you know. There's no real independent magazines out there that are, are selling 10, 20,000, 40,000 copies, you know. So... Um, so what I wanted to do is is create an online platform that is like very interactive and and feels like a magazine, you know. And people are starting to get the they get a, a not just a website, but they're in something, you know. And they can click on things. And what we see now is the is just the basic setup of what what I intend to do with it. Yeah. But um, you know, just to engage them more and get them to ask questions and and fill out polls and watch videos and engage something after that video and so it you know it becomes more tactile because that's why we like the magazine because we can feel it you know? yeah, yeah. it's that we, we like to feel things you know like vinyl who doesn't like vinyl you know so um back to uh, answer your question about the money well you know i make just enough at the moment to pay for the writers and for the album manager, the interview manager, um, and the editors, you know, and and for a trip to Big Sound. That's about, that's about all it covers at the moment. But um, now that we have the, the, that platform I was talking about in place, we can actually get sponsorship from clothing companies and, um, you know, alcohol companies and um, even government companies and TAFEs and all that sort of stuff. So, sure. um, 
So it's there. You know, you, look, people... I've heard it quite a bit over the last few days where people are saying, well, the music industry is in such a bad state and blah, blah, blah. All right, well, it is. You know, but let's just out-create that. Like, let's just make it so it's not that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we don't have to go, it's because people stole the music. Okay, that was not okay. That shouldn't have happened. And it should have been stopped a long time ago. And only... There's only action being put in right now to to slow that the the torrenting down. You know, like I know there's a law changing where they they have to um, pull down those sites within a week when they pop up now. Telstra and Optus and that sort of thing. It's a new incentive that's coming in. Um, but we, you know, that happens. There's no reason why you can't re- recreate something. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Look. I've had some conversations just today with some really high-level people who are much smarter than me, and they're actually saying the opposite of what you just said. They just said, <clears throat> um, and I say this respectfully, uh, the whole streaming thing is getting so powerful and gaining so much momentum that they say, you're right, we've gone, we've gone through a rough patch, but many different people, totally unrelated, are saying, we look, we're in for the brightest times of the music business where the, there's going to be so much money injected as as the average everyday person you know starts to pay for their uh, their monthly streaming account it's all going to add up and there's going to be you know billions of dollars injected into the business which hopefully then is going to you know flow into businesses like yours and mine and uh, see how we go exactly I, I think exactly right like it, it, it's the opposite like you know you always have that opposite and equal reaction you know it's just it, it fell and now it's been picked up again you know you yeah. just have to create new ways of doing it and you know if like you know Spotify maybe if they stop their free streaming and change that so everyone has to pay maybe that's enough right there to yeah. start changing it like for, you know yeah. um, but I don't know that because I, I this is just assumption yeah. but I think it would it could help yeah. you know so well, all the all the experts say that the uh, the big wave of income streams is is it started, right. and uh, there are artists, high level artists, mind you, but they're getting set, a regular seven figure incomes coming in, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's good times ahead. Um, so, interesting times. Uh, you write about your your magazine. It it does feel it's not just like a blog. It's not just like another WordPress site. It it, it gives a bit of prestige, I think, with your association with the heavy mag. Um, I guess if I was to play devil's advocate, if someone was listening to this, um, <clears throat> and again, I don't want to talk you down because I'm trying to talk you up, but w- why would you why would you pay advertising in Heavy Magazine where perhaps you could take the same amount of money and target your fans in Facebook, for instance? Uh, excellent question. I'm glad you asked that, actually. Um, you should do both. Yep. Yeah, it, because fans on Facebook may not be fans of Heavy, and fans of Heavy may not be using Facebook. There's a lot of people that aren't using Facebook. Um, we, like I, because I have a marketing background, I thoroughly look at the st- statistics. So yeah. I really um, pull them apart. And, yeah. and it, you know, we, we have customers that Facebook don't have. Mm-hmm. You know, it actually is a fact. <laughs> you know, hard as it is to believe, because you know I'm pretty much addicted to Facebook myself. But 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 um, it. It's also um, the number of times over equals um, more certainty for the for the potential buyer. So, you know, three times, four times they see that ad or they get that message, it's more likely that they're going to act on it. You know, that's that's been a marketing datum since the 1920s. It's just that repetitive message. So if they're on... Frequency, I think they, the acad- academics refer to that as. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's... It, it's just the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'm not saying that in a brainwashing way. It's just the, it's a communication. That's all it is. It's just, hey, you know, Napalm Death are touring and um, they're playing here, but you, you click on something and you forget, you know, how many times we've done that. And a week later we go, oh, that's right, Napalm Death are touring, you know, because everything's moving so fast now. Yeah. You have to keep putting that message there. Facebook is limited in that it'll only show it a certain amount of times, you know. Like you can, you can set it up so it shows what, the same person once a day. That's fine. But if they haven't acted on it, they haven't acted on it. Yeah. But if they see that their friend shared an interview with that band from Heavy, then it, there's more engagement. You know, that's a referral from the friend. Yeah. You see. So 
it, it's the same. It, 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 they're just two different platforms um, to, to put your message on. You know, you know, it not only reaches different people, but it, it, it reaches the same person at times, but it repeats that message. Yeah. And like I said, I think with your, with your platform, there's still an element of prestige to it because people know the brand, and if you're in that, you, it's, it's, it's definitely a rung up from just being featured in a blog or uh, some shitty podcast. Well, thank you very much. Um, you know what? It's really, um, it's really dawned on me this weekend, or this week. I keep calling it a weekend because it feels like a weekend when you're at these things. Um, I was talking to the team today. We've got a team of six people that, that are real, like, heavy meisters. You know, they're, they're right there working on it night and day with me. And um, I'm saying, like, one for one, when I introduce myself, people have gone, oh, you're a Carl from Heavy. You know, but it's the Heavy. It's not the Carl thing. It's the Heavy. Yeah. And their hands would go up. They're very fuscious, you know. They're, woo. Like, and it just kept happening one after the other. Cool. And I was pretty chuffed about that. So I, this morning when I woke up, I, I messaged everyone. I said, look, this is what's happening here. <laughs> so it, I think, um, like, the previous owners did a really good job with cementing that brand. there, that brand there. I saw the brand and, I, and I, I thought it was good timing. We can take this further. Let's do this. The platform's there. Let's get the good bands, the guys that are really working night and day, just like we are, to promote their art, you know, around the world. Not just focus on Australia, but go international. And it's fantastic. We get invited to, to all the gigs. We did Vans Wharf, a Warp tour. Uh, we did two of those. You know, we did Slayer the other night in New York, I think it was, and Green Day in Florida or somewhere. Um, Download, Hellfest, awesome. uh, Bloodstock, and they just invite us to them, which is pretty good for an Australian publication, you know. So, um, yeah, so that, well, you know, we're going to utilise that to... Totally. to so yeah, you, you're really you're really highlighting the importance, people who are listening to this, the importance of building a brand, you know, which takes a long time and a lot of investment and uh, no guarantees, but that importance of brand recognition. And the other thing that we should re-mention, you brought it up before, but you've got a really targeted email list too, aren't you? So like the, the power of landing in somebody's inbox who actually wants to hear from you and, and take your recommendation. Yeah, the, the emails are, are the key. The, the, it, there's a lot of marketing experts going around saying email's dead but it's false yeah. you know because we all have our favourite emails and we, we have one that goes out every day um, and again I've, t- I've heard, heard that no one likes those emails that go out every day but this is rubbish because the open rate is like 80% amazing <laughs> sometimes it could be 30 but mostly it's like you know way up there I've never seen anything like that working with massive companies that I've worked with so you know, and it just has news and the latest interviews and that each day. It's not even fancy. I, I, I really want to get in and redesign it so it makes it look a bit, a bit more um, clickable. But it, but it is what it is at the moment. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you have to um, you have to keep communicating. I think at the end of the day, that's that's what it's about. You know, it's like here it is. And I mean, when I took over, it was like whoa. You know, this is a big ship that I'm just about to take on. You know. How do I do this? And I, well, you know, it's um, with marketing. It's always quantity over quality. Um, you, you may hear the opposite to that quite often, but I'm afraid that's that ain't the way. It's always quantity over quality, the, and that's what I took on. I just went, let's just get up, everything up, all the news that comes in, do every interview, everything. And then let's look at the stats and see what the stats say. You know, let's not guess. You know, so we did a survey as well, and we had two and a half thousand people fill it out in the first twenty-four hours or so. Wow! And it was a really in-depth survey. Like, what? did you offer? Sorry to interrupt. Did you offer any incentive to do that, or are these are just people that want to help you out and give you their their feedback? Um, it was. I actually don't think there was an incentive. No. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was. It was. I, I didn't. I expected thirty or forty, 
it was two and a half thousand, and they they're all Australian, and um, the results were amazing. Like, you know, we asked what sort of car do you drive, what sort of um, uh, movies do you watch, do you buy vinyl, do you buy CDs, do you, what streaming platform do you use, and just for an example, like because we we do movies now. And um, a lot of people question why I put the movies in there, why we lean so heavily on on film. And I said, well, that's what they that's what they wanted, you know. And previously, it was just horror in heavy, which you think would go hand in hand with with metal. But um, after the survey, we we found that the majority of people like comedy. Metal heads like comedy the most, which kind of you know we are jovial. Yeah, you know, we're kind of nice people, you know, heavy <laughs> metal people, aren't we? It's like so like it was comedy and um, action, sci-fi thriller, sci-fi fantasy thriller, war, uh, documentary, then horror. Wow. Yes, yeah. and horror was like just a little blip on the on the map there. So, mind you, we still do a little bit of that, but. But I went, okay, well, that's what they want. They want comedy, they want action. So we started to interview the biggest of the biggest stars. You know, we interviewed Tom Hanks the other day and um, uh, Scarlett Johansson and Mark Warburg and um, Sir Anthony Hopkins and Tom Cruise. And, you know, it's like, so now we're actually seen as Australia's premier film um, that's outside the mainstream. So we got posters in the US at the moment for Tom Cruise's latest movie. And they're using our quote throughout the entire US. Heavy mag, four stars. Best film of the year so far or something. I can't remember what, exactly what it says. But it, it was because I, I looked. I didn't think, I looked. Yep. You know, I didn't assume, I asked. You know, it's like, what do you guys want? You know, what do you guys do? You know, what do you like? Rather than guessing... I, I asked him. That's really, really cool, man. That's really cool. I mean, it's not rocket science, and I guess... <laughs> <laughs> really? Sorry I interrupted you. Um, no, no, it's just... Um, you know, you just got to find out what people want, you know? Yeah. Everyone wants something. And there's some great stuff in there, too. I, I guess I just want to go back for the listener and say it never ceases to amaze me how many bands and artists that I deal with and, and come and ask me for advice and want to talk to me. And when I say, are you, are you harvesting email addresses? Are you, are you getting, you know, the email address from your fans? And in most instances, it's a no. So if you're listening to this, guys, you've got to get your shit together. Get your MailChimp account set up and find a way of offering some bribe and get people to, uh, to opt in so that you can, you know, permission market to them. You're getting their permission and you're, and you're telling them about what you're doing no matter what your business is. Yeah, like people fill it out. There's a, do it. It's all about the database. And like I was talking to a band before and, you know, they go, well, you know, you do so many things. You photograph, you write, you know, you run this, run that. You know, um, what's, what's the, it was a really good question, actually. Very philosophical chap, this one. He said, you know, what's the purpose behind all this? What's your purpose in life, you know? And I said, well, you know, I'm not going to go into that, but the purpose of Heavy is to create more fans for the bands. You know, that's, that's a bit of our, that's our motto in the in Heavy HQ, you know. So that's our purpose. That's why we exist. We, we exist to increase the database of the bands, you know. We're here to sell more tickets or to help them sell more tickets and sell more albums, you know. And if we do that, everyone wins. So that's actually the purpose of a publication. Mm-hmm. It's not there to break the news and it's not there to be scandalous or controversial. And We don't do any of that. I've played with the clickbait thing um, I do one recently. I just wanted to see what would happen. And um, that was... The headline was 2018 a Heavy Festival announcement. Or I, got a, I actually got a death threat. I mean, I don't know how serious it was, but we blocked the guy straight away. So why? Well, I don't understand. Why would someone be, be upset by that headline? Pretty... Um, look, we... We lost a baby. We, we lost a, a friend in the metal industry in Australia, you know, with, with Soundwave. When it went... Um, there's a, people are upset about that. They want it back. You know, we all want it back. Um, 
So when you you tease that, you know, and I teased it, and I did it on purpose. And some people go, well, "You feel really bad about it," <laughs> like industry people. I go, "I don't feel bad about it. I th- actually thought it was quite humorous because, like, it, it wasn't intentional to piss people off. It was I wanted to see what the response was. I don't do that often or ever, really. I just don't do the clickbaity thing. But I wanted to see like how much tension there was." You know, and we got a lot of backlash, but mostly it was good. Like we're talking twenty percent backlash. The rest was like, "Fuck yeah, we want the festival. That'd be great." And we had a list of all the potential bands there. You know, this is what you know based on who's released an album, who hasn't toured for the last two years or three years. This is who's due. So it was, you know, eighty percent of people thought it was great. But you know, I, I tested the water and just to see and we all want a festival and maybe next year we have one that's that's great mate well if i can help i would love to get involved um let's go back to the magazine this this is a question i I ask all publications and especially you know your reliance on survival with advertising does it ever happen when a really shit band comes up and says here here's my advertising uh dollars can you write a feature on us and tell the world how good we are uh it hasn't no. That surprises me. <laughs> I haven't actually had that. Not in not in heavy. Yeah. Um, when I worked for a couple other magazines back in the nineties, yeah. that happened quite regularly. Um, I guess the point I'm getting at is your reliance on advertising to fund this beast that you're you're working on and you're so passionate about um, might compromise some decisions if someone's waving cash in front of you and you th- you might have some ethical dilemma. We go well, you know what. Is this suitable for the magazine? Is this suitable for my audience? But yes, I want that big bag of cash you're dingling in front of my face. Big bag of cash, yeah. Um, look, you, you're selling... When you're selling advertising, you're selling your own database. So whether it's in the shape of a banner or in the shape of words, it's neither here nor there. It's the, the market that you're putting that communication into you know it's some publications uh, I I think a lot of listeners may not understand the question actually because it's a bit of a no-no in the publication industry to sell a front cover of a magazine although it happens sure some people say don't do it some people do it and say they don't do it (laughs) look these days it's neither here nor there you you're selling a database at the end of the day. You're selling your Facebook database to them that you work on. You work, we work on night and day to create so that we can put that information about the artist to the to people. You know, um, so yeah, I, I would if, if a band wants to promote themselves. Local bands, I don't charge much. Like you know. Anyone who's advertised with us, just contact them and ask them. Like, it's just ridiculous rates. Okay. <laughs> um, in fact, the industry itself, I don't charge much for. Um, when we go outside the industry, you know, they, it, it's a bit more wealth involved and they can sponsor things. So, like, at the moment, we're looking for sponsorship for the radio shows and podcasts and stuff like that, which we got coming in right now, which is really good. But if a band wanted to pay to have an article written... Uh, no, we don't do that. We actually don't do that. I had to think about that question a bit. Why, I don't know, because we pretty much put up whatever comes into the inbox that I open. Um, it's pretty common for people to say, I had someone here last night actually, so why don't you fucking answer my email? I go, first of all, I don't know who you are. Who are you? you know? And he introduced himself. He had a few brews. He was very passionate about it. I go, man, I'm sorry, like, I just don't know your name. I just don't, I did not click on your email. I did not reply. I just didn't see it because I get a thousand, almost 2,000 a week. I just get, like, because we're international, we don't just get Australian news. We don't get emails from publicists in Australia. We get them from in the UK, Europe, and the US. New Zealand, like all over the place. So there, there's like thousands, and I probably only open 5% of what I get because wow. I have to scroll through and 
you know, you can be organised. Like, I'm a very organised person. Like, I like to colour code everything. So, like, if I got an email from you, Rod, it would come up as a VVIP and it would be blue. I'm on it. <laughs> so, um, so you gotta, yeah, you've got to be organised. But we just, I just didn't see this guy. And this guy is important. I just had never met him before. Um, and so what I did was I pulled out my phone, you know, and I said, let's, I'll type in your name and let's just see, you know. And I typed it because he was getting really like, why don't you, you know, really aggro. And I typed it in and I showed him. I said, look, I haven't even opened the email. It's purely because I didn't see it. Simple as that. So, um, look, it, uh, yeah, we don't, we don't charge for editorial. But what, what I recommend is that, that people, um, you know, like, you can come to a publication and demand editorial. But you've got to understand that it takes time and money to actually do that. I have to pay the writers. They don't get paid much because we don't have much money. They don't, you know, they make a very small amount of money. So you've got to, like, when you're demanding that we cover your band, you, you, you know, we have kids and wives and, you know, as well. So, but what I recommend is that people, they, they buy some advertising space and we do the editorial and, you know, we put them up in the gig guide and that sort of thing. But we do that anyway. We just, we just write the editorial and we put them up in the gig guide. We just keep doing that. But that's only, that might only get a thousand views or five thousand views, but a campaign might get a hundred thousand. You know, that's the difference. You might pay a few hundred dollars. Like I'm, I'm talking only a few hundred dollars, right? Um, to get in front of a hundred thousand people, you know, and we, you know, that's why we've designed the new platform as well, so that people who are really serious and really want to use our database, that I can put their name up there more frequently. Yep. It is a numbers game, and creating that database, creating that number, the the, the amount, the size that we have of readers. Um, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of money, and so it, it you know, that's how we, that's how we get paid. It, well, you know, media has a bad name. To be honest, I actually fucking hate the media. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't even feel like like I got my pass yesterday, and it says media on it. I'm like, fucking hell. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, it is what it is. I don't like mainstream media, but I like the concept of media. You know. Like, here, you know, it's, it's, it's just communication. At the end of the day, it's just communication, you know. Here is a band. This is what they sound like. This is what they do. Here's some footage. Do you like it? Don't you like it, you know? And, and take it from there. Let's go back to the inbox. That's a, an incredible amount of emails you get. Is there any strategy that you can pass on to any artists or managers listening to this on, on how they can get noticed, how they can get your attention when, you, when your attention is so thin because it's so many people are vying for it? Um, like, for instance, I've always found the telephone works as a great partner in, in conjunction with the email. So a strategy that I always teach my students is that you write the professional email very politely, but then you try and find out the gatekeeper. In this instance, you, you try and find out their phone number, which you, with a bit of research and Google these days, you generally can. And you ring up and you say, hi, uh, my name's Rodney. Is this a good time to talk? Uh, I would love, you know, two minutes of your time. I've just sent you a proposal. I've just sent you an email. In, you know, would that work for you? Yeah, yeah. I, I answer everyone's email that I open. I, w- I won't open an email if I'm not going to answer it. Yeah. And, <clears throat> and if I can see a number, I'll answer it. Like, if it's a hidden number, I won't answer it. Okay. Yeah. Um, because why are you hiding? You know, it's a bad start right there, you know? So I don't answer it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I answer everyone's questions. Like, you have to. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you would agree that uh, the old school telephone is, is still a, a, a big part of getting through to people like yourself? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Totally, yeah. It's interesting because I've spoke to other, like, you know, publicists and stuff, and they say they fucking hate the phone because it's too time-consuming and they'd much rather the email. But in my personal experience, the phone combined with the polite approach email where I can say to you, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it, Carl. By the way, I've put this all in a proposal. I'll get back to you in a couple of days. You used a key word there. You said polite. Yes. 
<laughs> manners is the, the trick to the music industry is having manners. You know, you can only be a rude bastard when you like have made it. I agree, yeah. and I and I experienced that as well. I can think of one band when I was promoting metal for the brain that used to say to me, "We're on your fucking bill next year, and and we're, this is where we want to play." And you're just thinking, "I don't give a fuck who you are, but the way you just spoke to me, you can forget about it, champ." Yeah, it's um, manners go a long way. It's not a hard thing, That's you know. Exactly right. um, yeah, it's just um, you know, like don't be in it just for yourself, but like you know, look in your periphery and who who else can come on the ride with you, you know. You help like that's one thing at Big Sound you just run into people that are just we're all here to help each other. There's you know, there's um I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's I mean it is a nice culture here, but I don't think everyone's here just you know uh, you know what? Yes, you're actually right. And I had an experience of that last night. What I meant was in the in the metal world okay. we are. And it, I, I think I touched on this earlier is like Joey from Hysteria. Like, people go, you guys are talking to each other. Oh, why wouldn't we? We're, we're competition. <laughs> so what? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with competition. And um, as far as I'm concerned, we're sort of like, you know, the two of the best. And it's because we work on it all day, all night. And, and um, he's a great guy, and their publication is, is fantastic. But I, I don't dislike him. I'll, I'll help him if he needs help, you know. But outside the rock metal world, I find is a different story. And I definitely discovered, well, I've known that forever, but yeah, last night we had, anyway, you know, hipsters and <laughs> I'm not going to go into politics, but um, look, you know, some people are just in it for the money yeah. and that just pisses me off. Yeah. Uh, I'm, an old, I'm an old school thrash fan, you know, like I have a lot of attitude when it you can probably hear my voice is getting even more raspy it's, uh, from all the talking on, uh, over the last few days. But yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. There's sharks out there. There's definitely there's tons of sharks. But, yeah, look, I agree. But I got I got to also say, um, you know, this is a this is a fundamentally a business podcast, and I'm trying to t- I'm trying to teach people how to monetize in a, in a in an industry that's you know very difficult to monetize. So. Uh, um, I agree with everything you're saying. I think you've got to have all that integrity and honesty and, and relationships and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, if you're not bringing bucks in, if you're not selling those advertisements, uh, you're not going to last 10 years, eh, or five years, two years. No, it's not that. It's you've got the wrong message. Yeah, you're not doing what you, what you know you should be doing. If it's not working, stop doing it. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I've always found. It, Things come easy to people who are doing what they really are meant to be doing. Okay. Yeah, it, I like that. it's it's a struggle when um, when you're doing something you don't like. Okay. You know, so if you're finding it easy, then keep doing that. You know, make it hard for yourself. Make it a game. You know, create the barriers and run into them and, and, and defeat them. You know, like don't sleep. You know, fuck sleep. You know, like sometimes, like last week, I had the probably the worst week of the year because I wanted to get here. I had a target in mind, and I wanted the entire platform completed before I got here. And it was we had problem after problem, programming wise, you know, with the website and stuff like that. <clears throat> Server going down, blah blah blah. But I didn't give up. I just didn't sleep. Wow. You know, just. I got it done. <laughs> I hate doing that, and I try not to, but because uh, I love sleep. Carl, for anyone listening to this, if they were the right genre, they're a metal band, they're a hard rock band, they're a hardcore band, whatever, they're doing something heavy and aggressive and, and passionate. What is the best way to approach you and to get you on side and to get the best bang for their buck to get featured in your mag to get to that database of yours that you keep talking about? Uh, they just got an email. Email's the best. Just go info at heavymag.com.au. But you only open like 20% of them. That's what I'm talking, getting it. I was about to say, and if I don't respond, it's only because I didn't see it. Like, I just, I just don't. Like, uh, I only open an e- email if I intend to reply to it. And most of them, I don't know what's inside it, you know. 
So You need an email intern, Carl, and I'm sure there's plenty of young music business students that would love to get some experience working with you, buddy. Actually, that's a good point. We, we are, I am in need of a lot of people. I do, I do the work of about 11 people, and <laughs> it's just... Yeah, if, if, if people want to learn what we're doing and you know how to utilize a database like we've got, um, yeah, they can contact me, yeah. Well, well, I'd say don't email you. I'd say give you a phone call. So. Give me a phone call. I'm not going to... Well, should I say it on here? <laughs> well, look, it's up to you. Uh, you know, you might have 5,000, 10,000 people ring you up, but... Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that, but <laughs> you maybe want to cut this bit out. <laughs> no, but look, I guess the point I'm trying to make is I deal with a lot of very, very passionate young people who know that they want to be in the music industry in some capacity. It might not be in, in journalism or media or PR or marketing, but I am certain that if you put the word out there, there would be people that, you know, if you said, look, I can't afford to pay, but I'm going to give you a wealth of knowledge. I'm not just going to make you make coffee. Yeah. I'm going to get you in and, and help you. Um, People don't like to talk about it, but it's a part of the industry. You have to show your passion and your keenness, and a part of that is volunteering your time because that's what's going to lead, in my experience, to, to paid jobs and to other opportunities. Yeah, exactly. I work with people who like to work, yeah. like, you know, who, who, who like to learn. And if, if they don't, well, then they don't. You know, it's as simple as that. They, you know, the guys that work with us, they, you know, they go, oh, I would like to do this, and if it's the right thing, and I go, do it. And they go, okay. What do I do? I go, if you, you already know how to do it, you're asked to do it. Just go and do it, you know? And they go and start and, you know, they, off they go. Someone emails me about that job, I just forward it to them. Yeah. You know, I don't do it. I forward it to them. You can't micromanage. So, yeah, you have to let the person that's working for you do their job yeah. and not bypass them. Um, that's, like, vital, and they love it. Like, they, they just thrive at it, you know. Sometimes I don't hear for days from the interview manager or the album manager, you know. But I know that they're, that they're doing stuff because I see the stuff going up on the site. Yeah. But they don't need to, to talk to me. And they're just so natural at it now. It just happens, you know. So, yeah. Did I answer that question? Yeah, yeah, you did. I, I just wanted to add to what I said is that if you do give your time for free to somebody... Just make sure that when you do that, you're getting something from it. Like if, you, if they are making you make coffee for two weeks, then piss off and don't do that. Uh, it, it is a controversial area where you work for free because, you know, we're trying as hard as we can to make this an industry where you can make a decent living from it. But everyone's got to start at the bottom. It's, it's hyper competitive. And I just think that's a good strategy because then, you know, if I've gone and done... Um, you know, a half day a week for Carl at Heavy Magazine for the last six months, that's going to look awesome on my resume when I go for that paid position and when I ask you for a, a reference. Yeah, exactly. It, that's how I did it. Me too. Yeah, that's, that's how I... You know what? I actually still do that, you know. Um, I don't like to, to name drop, but, you know, my office is... I share an office with the Rolling Stone guys and... And I did that with them. I said, look, can I photograph for you guys, you know? And I was lucky enough for them to say yes, and, and I still do that. Um, and it wasn't for, it was for free at, at the start, you know? But, and fair enough, you know, because they have a lot of people asking to do it, and, and you know, there's certain etiquette involved in working for a prestigious publication like that, and if you don't know that then you're not going to be able to continue so you have to you have to just throw yourself in and try it and like I said before if it's hard it's not right for you if it's easy or easy enough but still a challenge you're probably on the right track you know but if you're sitting there going I can't wait until the hours go by or you know I just want to go home and watch Game of Thrones or something so it's not the right thing, you know. Well, I love that cliche, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Yeah, that's right. I mean, when I say easy, I mean it happens. Yeah. Things click. Yeah. Things work. I'm not saying it's, it's just like butter, you know, hot knife through butter. It's, it's um, you, you achieve your goals, I guess. Yeah. Like, you know, you have, a, you have that 
you set out to do something and you do it. And then you go, oh, well, that wasn't as hard as I thought. You know, that's, that's, I think that's just that's so important. And I think if everyone, this is a real idealistic point of view, and I like to think like this, but if everyone was doing that, what a harmonious planet we would have, you know? Because it, people would enjoy their life. Because work is life, you know? Yeah. You, you, your work, you love it, you know? It's your life. You know? Work is, doesn't have to be work. It, it's still life. You can't avoid that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it is what it is. You, just, you either like it or you, you hate it. And don't do something you hate. Just don't do that. It's not okay. It actually isn't okay. <laughs> well, that's right. I, I like to also say, unless you're a Buddhist, you're not coming back. This is it. It's not a dress rehearsal. So uh, I agree with you, buddy. Listen, mate, we've had a really good conversation. I've really enjoyed this. Um, before we wrap it up, you have trained yourself to become a marketing expert. You're running this publication. I would like you to leave this uh, interview or this discussion with um, some parting words of wisdom for anybody, I guess, particularly I'm thinking of managers and artists who are trying to get attention. What's your parting words of wisdom to try and help them get the attention that they need so they can get discovered and show the world their passion and you know, art that they're creating? Yeah. Um, what you put out comes back. So if you're contacting multiple amounts of people, you'll get multiple amounts of, or you get more responses than you will if you're contacting a small amount of people. It's a numbers game. The whole thing is, is a numbers game. No matter what industry you're in, it's just all about communicating more and more and more. Just communicate more. If you're not succeeding, it's purely because you're not talking enough. It's just like, I hope that's wise enough, but it's like, it's actually that simple. If you're not getting contacted back, if you're not finishing something you started with the help of other people, because you always need other people, you can't do things by yourself, it's purely because you, you, you stopped communicating, you, you're not asking enough questions, you're not asking people if it's okay, like if it's not, no, if, um, if they can do something for you, and no matter who they are. Is it okay if we do this? Is it, you know, can we do this with you? Can I come here? Can I go there? Can I play in this country? You know, like, we want to get on this tour. Can we play with this band? You know, it's like, you have to just keep asking. And the, that's what success is based on. It's that repetitive, that numbers game. The more people you talk to, the more opportunities open up. It's actually really basic, really. Yeah, I, I think the other thing is, which goes hand in hand with it, is don't think so much. Just do things, you know. And it comes back to what I was saying before with um, if it's going right, if it's easy, if it's working, then you, you probably just find that you're just doing it. You know, you're not sitting there thinking about it. You know, as soon as you start thinking about something too much, you start adding complexity into things and start opening doors to reasons why it's not going to work anymore. You know what I mean? Sure. Um, it's just do. Just contact people. Just like, yeah. Just the more you flow your ideas outwards, the more people it's going to to um, impinge upon or, or, or reach and therefore you get more response. Cool, mate. Well, we'll wrap it up there. Carl Newman, big boss man from Heavy Magazine. <laughs> Thanks so much for your time, buddy. It's been great talking to you. I really appreciate it. And uh, for all you guys listening, I'll put all of the uh, highlights for this into the show notes. Thanks very much, mate. Thank you. That was great, actually. I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Take care, buddy. We're shaking hands. <laughs> Well, there you have it, people. Did you enjoy my conversation with Mr. Carl Newman? I hope you did. I hope you learned something. Uh, please feel free to come over and say day to me at facebook.com forward slash music business facts and uh, let me know what you think of the show. Let me know what you think's good. Let me know what you think's bad. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to hear in the future. 
I would love to hear from you. And uh, don't forget, if you want to get in touch with Carl, uh, implement some of those strategies that we talked about on the podcast. I'd be hitting him up very respectfully, of course, at uh, info at heavymag.com.au. But as I touched on in the podcast interview, I think the phone call and the telephone are still a great tool to, uh, to back up all of the emails and proposals proposals you send through. Uh, And if you want to, you can also check out heavymag.com.au. I know I'm talking about a lot of URLs in this episode, so it'll all be over in the uh, show notes at musicbusinessfacts.com. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't already, I would love you to su- subscribe to the show on iTunes so you don't miss any of the uh, cool interviews I've got coming up in the future. And I do have some really cool ones coming up, not to mention the uh, 110 episodes I've now got behind me. So uh, there's a lot of cool shit to consume if you've uh, only just discovered me. Uh, and there's lots of stuff to get back into your system if uh, you've been listening for a while and you want to go back and check out some of those older episodes. Just before I go, I also want to quickly do a quick plug for my uh, free mini course with the legend legendary artist manager Andy Farrow um, and you can check out that at musicbusinesslecture.com and uh, I'm getting some great feedback from that so again if you haven't uh, checked out musicbusinesslecture.com and signed up for Andy's mini course with myself do yourself a favor because uh, lots of people are getting a lot of value out of it it's awesome and I'll give you a little hot tip once you're on that little mailing list as well there's a few extra little bonuses that'll come your way after a couple of days of signing up And uh, that's about it for this episode. So uh, before I clock off, as usual, I'll leave you with a quote. And this one's from Abraham Lincoln, who once said, what kills a skunk is the publicity it gives itself. Have a think about that one. Until next time, friends, this is Rodney Holder signing off for musicbusinessfacts.com. Have a great week. You've been listening to the Music Business Facts podcast. For more essential music business tips and information, visit musicbusinessfacts.com. 